Hello everybody. It's Friday, it's three o'clock, so it must be our live. <laughs> nice to see you today. Do, see, do say hello if you can see me. If you're watching, tell me where you're watching. Give me a thumbs up. Um, I'm just gonna refresh my page. Oh, I think it came up before I even did that today. If I'm getting better at it, or if this is just... I have my screen um, uh, up at 175%. <laughs> so that I can read read it. So let me just go down. Ah, oh, there we go. There I am. There I am. So how are you all this week? How's your week been? Do say hello if you're watching. It's always nice to catch up with people um, at this time every week. I know we're on Facebook and Instagram this week, so do feel free to say hello wherever you are. And I know you're there and I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> Although I'm quite happy to do that as well. <laughs> we do do that a lot. Yeah, we do that a lot. Amy often says to me, what was that? So I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> we do it to each other quite a lot. I'm just uh, drinking my tea. Hi Phil, how are you? Hi Charlie. How are you today? You're on Facebook this week then, instead of Instagram. Hi Charlie, hi Phil. Have you been making more lace knickers, Phil? I sent, I sent Phil some more lace things. You know that I didn't send quite a lot oh, yeah. last week, so I sent lots of nice... Hi Maybe Janet. Lace. Hi Janet, how are you? Oh, don't use happy turn. That's well done, good. just in the nick of time. Yeah. All that reminded me I need to pay mine. You sure, very good. Ah, very I good. forgot, I need to pay mine. Thanks yes. for the reminder, Janet. <laughs> Hi, Hi Helen. Helen. And Susan, how are you? Nice to see you both. Hi Carolyn. Hi Barbara, what are you up to? It's a lovely spring day, isn't it? Oh, I just finished your silk cami, that's brilliant. Oh, that was good, yes, I recorded that on a with the silk uh, camisole along and I uh, recorded it for people who wanted to catch up. Hi Catherine, how are you? Hi Catherine! Nice to see you. what have you been saying? Hi Justine. Just check it in. Oh that's okay. Hi Justine. Um, Justine's going to watch later. Yeah, can't wait for you Ulysses. We can't wait for this as well. Did you get your pattern okay Justine? We're ready. We're ready for that one. That's going to be a I'm fun one. I'm very excited about that one. Yeah, we're quite excited. Oh, Phil's finished both pairs of knickers. Hooray! Lots of lace knickers. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh look, Victoria's here as Bloomsbury Square dressmaking fabrics this week. Hello Bloomsbury Square. Uh, she's in the car coming back from dropping off the BAT. Oh, oh. that, that's to um, my sister Emma who does both of our books. <laughs> she keeps us in line, doesn't she, Victoria? Hi Jill. Got your order, that's great. Oh, hello Sue Cotton on Instagram. On Instagram. Oh, hi Sue. And Catherine's hi, Susan. making a Richmond blouse until the sun goes out. Oh, that's so lovely, Catherine. Look forward to seeing that. Hi Suzanne. She Hi Sally. And Sally. And Bar oh, Barbara's got her just got her fabric. What did you go for in the end, Barbara, for the Ulysses um, coat? We went for tensile twill. So gorgeous. And <laughs> Victoria said, Oh, don't know why I'm with Bloomsbury. <laughs> we don't mind. Victoria or Bloomsbury, we know it's you. Victoria joined us with a silk camisole uh, so along this week, which was lovely. So nice. That was a really good fun one. With lots of people, all sewing the silk. Hi Catherine, how are you? Oh, Nanny's, Nanny's saying hello. Oh, hi Nan! <laughs> so anyway, hi, she gets to see us, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> On a Friday. Hi Claire, what are you doing? I'm thinking you're top stitching. Oh, Claire's doing the denim skirt with us on a Wednesday evening, so yes. You, you do get, I, I find with that, I really want to get it perfect. I'm always up picking top stitching. Hi Joe. happy Friday. Nice to see you. How was your silk camisole this week? Did you get that finished? I hope we didn't put you off sewing the silk, Joe. <laughs> Hi, Helen. What have you ordered? Helen's just ordered from Victoria. All the bits for the kimono for the sew along. That's great. That's going to be fun in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Suzanne's had to unpick some of her cami, but nearly finished. I've still got the second strap to put in on mine, I have to say, because I, I was busy helping everybody. I didn't get mine finished in the end. So I've just got to do a few bits on that. So that was it was really good fun on uh, on Wednesday doing the sew along. It's so lovely to see everybody. It's really nice. It feels like you're all here with me in the sewing room. Oh, Joe's finished hers. Oh, good, Joe. It didn't put her off. She's off onto the next one. Hooray! <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> really good. She's going to start another one tomorrow. I lengthened mine. I don't know if I said that. And I lengthened mine by about three inches in the end because my first one was nice, but I just wanted it a bit longer. 
that we did that the sewing with silk using the Ogden Cami by True Bias. It's a really good pattern. Uh, what's that? The beer ladies did their first ever Instagram earlier. Bear ladies. Bear ladies. Beer la bear ladies. I don't know who that is, Charlie. The bear ladies, the singers, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, hi, Celia. Oh, Celia, it's so nice to see you. Hi, Celia. Oh, I missed you, Celia. Celia, and uh, Celia uh, is another one of the ladies who teaches at the shows, and we haven't because there's been no shows. We haven't seen each other for ages. I saw that you've been making bags, Celia. Quite heavy duty ones by the look of it. Uh, Barbara's. Oh, Barbara's already finished her homework. Hi, Angela. How are you? Suzanne's cut out. What have you cut out? Another stretch pencil skirt, the right size this time. Once you get that size sorted, Suzanne, you'll be away making loads of those. It's a really good skirt. Oh, on the repair shop. Oh, thank you. Oh, the bear, like the ones who do the, the um, repairs of all the teddy bears. I get it now, Charlie. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you have to fill us in. <laughs> My mind's always on, on sewing. Oh, I've got another skirt for you to tell. Oh, what's Janet saying? Janet's finished a 12 for her top in the cheap jersey using rotary cutter against the metal ruler. That would help with that tricky jersey, Janet. We've got it now, Charlie. <laughs> so another skirt that, uh, oh, Celia's saying hello to you, Amy. Hi, Celia. <laughs> the Celia would also pop, like, when I'm Amy, in the background. Amy's in the background. You will see her later. She's going to come round and uh, show you what she's been making this week and also do a another a lovely cocktail or mocktail recipe really lovely one this week oh see did you think you might come back to the shows if the, if the shows come back we miss you and sue's on instagram sue cotton's on instagram today saying watching us so she'll see that you're there oh so the bags celia's making are, are, are for midwives and community nurses that's great celia i saw you were having um uh issues with the stitches and stuff have you tried the super super universal needles that Schmetz do or the super universal yeah super universal they, they are sort of coated so they supposed to be they're supposed to be good for stitching with um fabrics that are oh here we go Kathleen's just posted another pic another link but I'll have to look back at that later um Kathleen because it's just disappeared nine hacks for the old Dunkami oh that's great so we can make it into something else, that'd be brilliant. But yeah, Celia, these super universal needles, they're, they're coated, so they're supposed to be good for, sti for stitching things that have like a uh, uh, glue on the back. So if you're stitching through, I don't know, self-adhesive um, Velcro or something like that, or somewhere you use, use tape. But anyway, super, Kenneth King posted super about universal. Those week, he did, yeah, actually, we've got them here. For stitching through vinyl. The, through vinyl, so it doesn't, they don't stick on the um, sort of leathers and vinyls. So Super universal by Schnetz. So Barbara, for the Ulysses, she's bought a beautiful shade of ginger smooth drape tensile twill. Mm. Didn't buy the pink. <laughs> I think a pink. Oh, hi Cynthia. Bad. Cynthia's joining us on Instagram. Hi Cynthia. Oh, I have got your email, Cynthia. I will reply. Actually, I can tell you now. This was about the um, the uh, um, kimono that we're going to be making on the sew along, and see, um, Cynthia was asking about the bias binding I put that you need. I've actually upped it for anyone who's looking for about eight or nine metres of bias binding. And the bias binding is for doing Hong Kong binding um, on the, uh, or the seams, the construction. On the pattern, it says the binding is for doing all these lines, but we're going to do that with top stitching instead. So we're using binding on the inside and top stitching on the outside. So Suzanne's bought the pink twill for the Ulysses. Oh. Exciting. I don't think they are titanium, Celia. Can you have a look, Amy, and see what the... They're, they're black. Oh, but the super universal, oh, sorry. In a minute, Amy, we'll have a look, and I'll have a look. It's bad timing, Mum. <laughs> Amy will explain. Celia's <laughs> going to email me. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> Celia, we'll, we'll chat on email. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing something in the background. Amy's just doing whilst, something. Whilst monitoring, monitoring. Uh, these messages. Cynthia says, sounds good. Yeah, so it'll be nice on the inside and then we'll do top stitching. I think on the website I've upped it, Suzanne, to um, nine metres, just to make sure we've got enough to go around the pockets and around the sleeves and everything. So, um, Also, people were asking about, with this pattern, I'll just talk about this for a second, this pattern, people were asking about what size to make. Now, 
it has no finished garment measurements on the actual pattern pieces, which they normally do on both patterns. So uh, when I got my pattern out to check, I, I looked at it and I realised that I'd actually measured the pattern and written down the sizes. It has got a lot of ease. So it's got about 15 inches ease in it, so above your body measurements, which is why I made a medium. So the medium actually is for 12 to 14, size 12 to 14. Um, but uh, my measurements, would I would have given my measurements, I would have made a large and it would have been much too big. So this pattern, although it's supposed to be big, there's 15 inches ease above your body measurement. So you may want to think about when we come to do it, we're going to do a size smaller. But that's just to answer questions from people who are asking me about the sizes. We're going to be doing all of that on the sew along anyway, so don't worry too much about it. It does help when you know to know how much fabric to buy and all that sort of thing. We've got two whole days for that workshop. Yeah, we have. It's going to be great fun. We're going to do all fancy top stitching. I sent your thread, Suzanne, by the way. Suzanne asked me to match a thread to the... Um, oh, it was tricky. It was tricky. The, <laughs> the wow, lid. I mean, it's really personal choice. <laughs> Uh, need to send me some of these. Oh, uh, you can go online. Again, um, I'm going to put some new bias bindings online. Actually, there are uh, there are the plain poly cottons online already. Uh, I've also got some new ones. You'll see them behind me, actually. I've got some new oh, colours. Yeah. Uh, I've got some satin bias bindings. If you fancy doing Hong Kong binding in satin. Helen said she's only ordered six metres of binding. Should she ask Victoria for some more? Uh, it's only if you want to do binding around the pockets. Um, it might be an idea if, you, if, you, if she hasn't sent your order. Sorry, Helen. I just I measured all around the inside of my jacket, and I thought, oh, I don't want us to be short because I know when we did the uh, duster coat, we were a little bit short, so I re-measured it just to make sure. So if she hasn't sent your order already, it might be an idea just to up it, up it quickly. Send her an email. She's watching. She's here, Victoria. Helen might want some more binding. So, um, yeah, as I said, it's just so that we can do, you know, you have the option to do all of your seams then with the bias binding. It's going to be a great one. Yeah, Suzanne, we, I, I, luckily I had the um, fabric swatches from Merchant and Mills so I could match your linen. Because <laughs> Suzanne had, had wanted me to match the thread for her for Merchant and Mills linen. So did that and then we chose you a contrast. Amy and I had much discussion and, and sent you a contrast top stitching thread. Hope you like it. Yeah, hope so. We liked it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be a good workshop this week. Uh, anyway, that's what, you know, that's what we've been doing this week, is talking about sew-alongs, but you've all been busy this week as well. If you're watching the Midhurst Sewers page, you'll see Justine has made a wonderful pink um, jumpsuit. So cool. With zips, it's so cool. I mean, it really suits her. Justine's very tall and, and looks fantastic. So if you haven't yet looked... Um, Victoria's saying, Helen, just do a quick order for the extra and she'll pop it in. Just select free shipping at the end so you don't you go, have to Helen. pay double shipping. There you go. Just do an order and select free shipping. Thanks, Victoria. Um, yeah, have a look. If you if you get a chance, have a look on Mid Her Sewers at... Uh... Oh, Ruth is here on Instagram. Hi, Ruth. It's funny nice on Instagram because you. you have to um, work out who the code name is. You do, yes. <laughs> Everyone you has do. their own little code name on there. So have a look at Justine's uh, jumpsuit. Suzanne's been making lots of things for her grandchildren. Uh, again, pajamas and they've got really pretty dresses. And Margaret put a post up saying that you can now buy, if you've got a Dymo label uh, maker, you can now buy iron-on fabric strips for your Dymo. Um, so you can do all your, you can make your label, make your own labels. So I straight away went onto Amazon and bought some fabric uh, label thing for my Dymo label maker so even more things are going to be labelled now. So Suzanne's saying the bias should match the top stitching thread can we help her? Oh, we can do that but Suzanne yeah, yeah. We can do that if we'll you pop like in it to... the same colour that we sent you. Yeah it can do it can do yeah. Or you can go completely off yeah. off grid. Yeah I posted your thread last night unfortunately but I'll send you some I'll send you some um, bias as well Suzanne to match your thread it'll be a surprise <laughs> for you. So yeah, did anybody else do that once they saw Margaret's post on the uh, Midhurst Sewers? Go straight on and, and buy, a, buy fabric labels for their Dymo label maker. Oh, did you get some? I've ordered it. It's, <laughs> arriving, it's arriving today. That's exciting. So we can make fabric labels. It'd be good for the samples actually, Ames, won't it? It would. Hmm. For the shows and things. Yeah. I wonder <laughs> how iron-on they are, like how durable they are with washing and stuff. Oh, I don't know. 
Um, Margaret's already done some, so we can ask her. <laughs> Suzanne said she likes surprises. Oh, that's good. That's good. We'll, send... <laughs> we'll send that to you. It is nice getting. I like all these getting these parcels through the post. It's great, isn't it? I keep forgetting what I've ordered, and then I get this little parcel of. Oh, yeah, forgot about that. Happy things this week. Hmm. Yeah, so as well as the new um, bias binding, some of which you'll see behind me, I'll, I'll put all these on the website later or over the weekend. There's some really nice satin bias, uh, which would be nice for doing. I thought satin might be quite nice for the Ulysses Co. actually. Um, and there's also a, a, a three new colours in the multicolour um, overlocking thread, which you'll know that um, I've been using with this on some of my workshops. Uh, it's really hard to get hold of. Every time I do an order, I order about 10 colours and three turn up. So. I'll add some more to this week's order and see if we can get a few more new colours. Everyone's after it. It's great fun. It's great fun. Because we can't always match our overlocking threads, can we? But so it's quite nice to have uh, multi-colours. Just put them in the upper looper. Um, so you're just on the, on the one you're going to see. So you really need one, one reel of it. And it's, uh, it's good fun. It's good fun. So a few new products to go up on the website this week. So have a look out for those. And we have been planning uh, new sew-alongs. Amy and I were... Planning yesterday, we were planning day, oh, didn't yeah. we? Um, and we were thinking, well, we're probably not going to be back here in the sewing room for quite a while, so we'll put some more sew alongs in. So, we're so thinking, many. Yeah. Yeah. So pop up. Look out for those. Hi, Julia, how are you? All good with us. Hope you're okay. Hi, Julia. Thank you for your emails this week. You'll notice that I did my, Julia was asking about the French dark dress, which is my toile behind me here for the French dark dress, which is one of our sew alongs coming up. It's the Maven pattern. Mrs. M, as you reminded me last week, <laughs> the Maven so pattern. Funny. That was funny. Afterwards, we were like, oh, of course, how stupid of course, we are. I know. Like, of course we know that. <laughs> you caught us off guard. You did. It's a bit Hi, like Margaret. The Hi, Margaret. We were just talking about the um, uh, the fabric labels that you found that go over the dymo. I've ordered some, of course. And uh, yeah, that was very good. Very good. Have you washed it? What we were asking is, have you washed anything with the labels on yet? So, let's find out how good they are in the wash. So, I will do a trial once mine arrives. And Janet says, good. I'm yeah. guessing that's uh, so along. More so yeah, along. Yeah, so we thought we'd do some more days, more evenings. What did we decide on? Should we tell um, them? We've done a few. What did we decide on? We've so, done... Oh, a shirt dress. Oh, yes, a We're shirt. We're going to do another series of evenings on mm -hmm. Wednesdays and Thursdays throughout Feb and March. Yep. So um, Wednesday evening, Thursday evening. So one of those will be a shirt, shirt dress. dress over four evenings. We thought that'd be good. Lots of techniques and a really useful dress, which you can, you know, goes over all seasons. You can make or a shirt. You could make just or a shirt. Make a shirt. It doesn't shirt have to be a dress. Too. Oh, Margaret says she's not washed it yet. Well, we'll do a test. Yeah. Uh, good news about the label maker. <laughs> um, Are we going to do a classic skirt? Skirt classic with a concealed. Skirt. Yeah, skirt with a concealed zip. Um, uh, yeah, a few things. A little jacket. A pair of trousers. Oh yeah, we're going to do the Pietra pants by Paper Cut Patterns. We should no, not Pietra. Not Pietra. They're what are they the. Called? They're something else. Oh, no. what are they called? I can't remember now. You've... It's not Pietra. There's another. There's another. Paper Cut Patterns have a really cool patterns. little pair of Capri pants. So we're going, we're to, going to do the Mayfair dress by um, Nina Lee. Nina Lee, which is a lovely jersey dress, really lovely neckline, which I really love. So we're going to do that one. There's also a Vogue dress that we're going to do. Lovely bow dress, which you could do colour blocked if you wanted to. So I'll put those up over the weekend. So have a look, um, and uh, and we'll be able to carry on sewing all the time. We can't be here in the sewing room together. Um, so this week I felt a bit summery, so I thought I'd just show you. This is the skirt. This is actually the um, the your skirt. We're doing this as a sew along. Can you see it if I stand up? Can yeah, you see stand back. Stand back. Oh, this is. I didn't put my heels on. Did I? Oh. This is the this is the Fior skirt, which is by um, Closet Core Patterns, and we've got that as a sew along in a couple of weeks' time. It's a wrap skirt, really nice wrap skirt. I love this skirt with a uh, asymmetric front. Hi, uh, Jean. Um, I will. I can't remember the size of the patterns actually. I've meant to have that out on my table. I'll look it up for you, Jean. Um, uh, it's got an asymmetric front. It's got a pocket. Look at that wrap skirt with a pocket. How about that? So, so cool. This is so long in a couple of weeks. There's still some spaces on that. So do join us if you fancy making that. Um, I really love it actually. It's got button here and here. It was quite a simple make, wasn't it? It was actually. Yeah, it didn't take me long to make. So Not if you fancy join us with it for your skirt, the pattern, the pattern actually envelope doesn't do it any justice. It looks really sort of rigid and A-line, but it's really quite nice and drapey. And uh, yeah, I like the asymmetric 
styling of that. So do join us for sure. that one. Yeah, I think Suzanne's doing that. Um, it's it's a butterick pattern actually, Jean. So it probably goes up to a twenty two, I would imagine, but I'd have to double check. Um, thank you, Suzanne. Yeah, this fabric is from Mood. So it's a it's a printed linen from Mood from one of our trips to America. So it's really nice to be using up these these fabrics that uh, I have. Thank you, Julia. It looks much better on than it does. Um, I think I, I think I sent you the pattern, Suzanne. It'll be in one of your surprise parcels. I think I sent it with the Ulysses coat pattern. So you should have it. Um, but yeah, this is a, I'm really pleased with this make actually. It was really simple, nice summer skirt. I did have to lengthen it about three inches and it's still only just below my knee. Um, so yeah, we'll post a full length picture. Margaret's asking if you can send a full, post a full length. So I'll do a, we'll do one, we'll for do one after. For, for the gram. For the gram, as Amy says. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice lots more posts going up on our gram. Yeah. Well, Amy's been hot on the admin this week. She's got planning. She's done calendars. Yeah. All she's over been, it. Yeah. It was all that coming in. Moving all the sewing retreats. Yeah. Emailing all the cruise people. Speaking to Cunard. All sorts of things been going on. Oh, Cynthia's saying she can't see the satin bars in the shop. It's because it only came in today, Cynthia. Literally, it literally arrived yeah, this literally afternoon. Literally got it out of the box just before the live so Dad, I could tell you about it but I will put it on the website over the weekend if I can do it tonight I will do but otherwise it'll be over the weekend uh, and yeah I will post a picture of this skirt me wearing it I'll put my heels on so it looks a bit better um, afterwards it's a really nice skirt unlined so um, easy to make you could do French seams with it or I think this one I just finished with an overlocker so I wanted to have a quick make but it's uh, it's nice it's lovely and this is um Origami top, makes a telly origami top, which I've got lots of, and they go with everything. So, lots of things. Uh, the Mila dress, this is linen. I used linen on the Mila dress, um, but you could use uh, all sorts of things for that. You could use. Um, Some people have used linton, cord. Yeah, all sorts of things. Needle cord looks very nice. I'm um, thinking of using linton on one half. Um, and hmm. something else I haven't decided on the other half. Yeah, there's um, yeah, as long I think it's nice to make sure that the top and the bottom have a similar weight. Got to be the same fabric. So I think, like I said, and I might have mentioned last week. I think Jane and um, uh, Sally have made it with lint at the bottom and uh, velvet at the top, which is a nice combination. And people have made it with um, uh, uh, linen and cotton and cotton at the top. Yeah, Julia, I think, yeah, that Julia's saying about cutting off down her origami dress to make a top. Yeah, I think, you know, I've got a couple of dresses, but I, I like the tops because you can tuck them in. They look very nice tucked into the um, pull-on pencil skirts, actually, the stretch pencil skirts. Hi, Jackie, how are you? Thanks for joining us today. We're just having a chat. Hi, Jackie. Just having catch-up, which is really nice. See what everyone's been up to, what everyone's making. I was showing off my skirt, which is the Fior skirt from Closet Core, which we're doing a sew along for. Um, nice and nice and uh, quick make. Uh, Ruth saying I'm pear shaped, so would the Mila dress work as it has no side seams? Yeah, I think it's really flattering. I'm a bit pear shaped at the moment. <laughs> it's really flattering, yeah, because it uh, it comes in um, at the bottom, so it's a nice, it's like almost not really a tulip shape, but slightly comes in at the bottom, so. Yes, definitely. And I'll show you how to do a fitting before we stitch this centre seam as well. So you make sure you're happy with the shape of it because you can adjust it on the front and back seams before you attach the top and bottom together. So we can definitely do that, Ruth, if you fancy doing that one. What's Julie about to make a pencil skirt with some black and white scuba? Oh, that'd be nice. Mm. Yes, you can, you can put a kick pleat in it, yeah. Yeah, particularly if you're if it's not if your fabric's uh, not got a lot of stretch and you think it might be uh, might slow you down with you walking, you put a kick pleat in. That is the good thing about the Meg's telly, isn't it? She does give you lots of um, uh, making the most of your pattern. It gives you ideas of taking your pattern a bit further as well. So, uh, which is really great, it gives you lots of ideas of different things you can do. I think this week on her newsletter, she's talking about layering her different patterns together. Um, which is really, uh, you've lots of ideas, lots of ideas. So what else have you been up to this week? Well, just a quick 
special offer which also we posted on Midhurst Sewers was that the fabric store in New Zealand have got up to 40% off some of their fabrics this week and some of you will know that they do a really nice merino wool jersey. So obviously you have to think about the uh, delivery costs on that but uh, it's really nice. I think Sally Scott's bought some of that lovely, really lovely. So if you fancy some of that, it's a good time to buy it. Yes, Susan, yes, you can make the pencil skirt slightly longer, but they, like you said, like uh, Julia was saying, make it a bit longer and put a kit fleece in it. It'd be really nice. Really nice. I've been watching the um, Oak Couture shows in Paris this week because I'm, you know, sad like that. <laughs> <laughs> it is Oak Couture. It's a spring, spring, summer 2021. Oak Couture shows starting to come up uh, and digitally, which is really lovely. So you can watch them on the various companies website so Chanel have done one this week which is lovely of course you'll see although it's spring summer they still use some Linton yeah, summer weight Linton yeah exactly really lovely lovely ideas and uh, uh, they've done it uh, in a similar way to how they always do it but the models come in and as they've gone around they, they, there's all empty chairs and then the models take the seats because there's obviously no guests so the models take the seats around the edge and then at the end the bride comes in on a white horse so, so dramatic. it's very dramatic and very, very Chanel Blooms oh, I haven't Green. seen Fendi yet, Blooms. Um, Fendi was so Victoria. cool. I saw Fendi and Noel Fielding from mm. Bake Off designed some of the pattern, the print. Oh, you said I didn't get Yeah, he it. did a series of drawings that mm. Fendi used in their fabric print. And they're really, it's, I mean, it's very out there. Fendi's quite dramatic yes. and bright, but I thought that was really cool that he got that. Yeah, I'll have a look at that later, Victoria. Suzanne watched the show. And also Valentino and Dior have also posted their shows. It's well worth on social media following these companies because then you get a little preview of what's coming up and you can you can watch them live as well. Um, so that's been a nice watch this week. So if you haven't watched those yet, go off and uh, have a look at the Oakature shows and get some inspiration. I know it's not stuff that... Actually, I was quite surprised. Normally Oakature is not very wearable, but a lot of the things, particularly Valentino, were quite wearable. I was... Uh, enjoying that today. <laughs> Amy's just putting faces, sorry. I'm sorry. I wasn't putting faces at you. All will be revealed <laughs> shortly, yeah. ladies. All will be revealed. You'll get the full lowdown of what's going on behind the scenes today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not showing you. Behind the camera, honestly, I, I, I've been such a mess this week. Amy keeps telling me off. It's going to get worse as well, because we're going to be doing about five sew-alongs a week soon. So. <laughs> Yeah, the link on Francis, oh, Francis actually, I think, has put an email to all the couture shows on um, her email I this week. I think Bonnie has just joined us on Instagram. Has <laughs> she? Bonnie, all the way from New York. Hi, Bonnie, how are you? Oh, Hi, Bonnie. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. How are things out in, in New York then? All good? My daughter Alice is out there now with her husband. Living the life. <laughs> Julia's saying we'll have loads of clothes though doing all those that's what I keep thinking I was thinking that yeah, yeah. what a great mm. way to boost your wardrobe during lockdown just Ooh. do all the sew alongs loads of, we'll have loads of clothes yeah we will oh there's Sophie what she's posting Vogue is, oh, is the website yeah uh, yeah Vogue are great to follow thanks Sophie Vogue.com Sophie's my lovely friend who's a textile designer so she's always up on the current fashions and trends in uh, textiles as well um, so yeah if you follow Vogue.com They've got links to all the shows. Uh, and if you follow Vogue on Facebook as well. Thanks, Sophie. See you later. We have our weekly Zoom meet, friend, uh, Zoom uh, chat on a Friday. Oh, great to see you too, Bonnie. So um, lovely that you joined us. Yeah, it's really lovely. Have you got through all your Linton yet, Bonnie? Are you still making? Bonnie joined us on the Linton retreat, the, the uh, Couture retreat a couple of years ago and bought lots of Linton, as we all did. Uh, Susan has booked the Royal School of Needlework talks from the MA website. Oh, from the website. Ah, are they good, Susan? You watched one this week? Because you do some, you do quite a lot of embroidery, don't you, as well, um, Susan? So I'd love to, I'd love to hear how they are. That'd be great. There's lots of things to catch up on in that at the moment, isn't there? Lots, lots of people are doing the um, uh, talks online, so you can uh, spend all day. You could spend all day on screen, couldn't you, really? Susan said they're very good. So yes, well, like I said, we've been doing uh, our tutorials at the beginning of the week with my dressmakers portfolio ladies. So we did lots of chat there, caught up, looked at their projects. Then we had sewing with silk on Wednesday and second week of denim skirt on 
Wednesday evening. That's all going really well. Lovely looking skirts. It was great to see everybody's back pocket designs. That was their homework, was their designing the back pockets for their denim skirts. So that was great. So um, we've got more homework to do this week. We did pockets and zips this week. So I'll catch up with everybody this um, uh, on Wednesday and see how they're getting on. Next week we've got the classic cardigan, I think. We do. Classic cardigan and yeah. more denim skirt. Plus, I, skirt. oh no, the week after we've added more. Yeah, the week after we've added some more. So, yeah. So keep an eye out on the website. I'll be updating it with my from my list. So so this week I was going to do a little demonstration this week while we're chatting. Okay. Also in the Embroidered the bags, bags live women, webinar. I've got oh, gold wow. work and needlework in a couple of weeks. Oh, that'll keep lovely. Busy. That'll be lovely, Susan. How lovely. So I thought this week I would do um, a little demonstration on applique. Uh, I know a lot of you have been um, making lots of clothes and it is quite nice to embellish your clothes with applique. So there's a couple of things I can show you which, which might um, show you how easy it is to applique. Amy's going to try and move the camera without showing any of the chaos. That's around I'm us. trying very hard. At the moment, <laughs> you're just going to get the back of the laptop because I didn't actually position that very well. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> so got to around the lights. Just got to walk around lights. Stuff. Had to get the extra tripod involved. Ooh, oh, I think we did it. We did oh, it. Well nobody, done. nobody saw anything. It's no. all good. Well done. <laughs> so Although okay. that's slipping. Okay. Okay. Oh no, they saw some on Instagram. Oh, it's tricky with two screens to monitor. So, applique is where you apply um, a fabric piece or patch onto your um, garment to um, embellish it, really. So I thought I'd show you a couple of ways that you can do that. Um, one with a woven fabric and one with a stretch fabric. The product that you use is um, Bondaweb. This is my Bondaweb. And Bondaweb is a fusible paper. Um, so the first thing you do is to draw, to decide what you're going to use as your um, your shape. I'm going to use this sort of petal shape, although that's quite big. I'm just thinking it might be quite big to go around. I might make that smaller. Um, when you buy Bondaweb, you'll notice that one side is rough, that's the blue side, and one smart side is smooth, that's the paper side. So the first thing you're going to do, once you've cho chosen what your design is going to be, is... Uh, I've got a template. It's always handy to have a template. You can always download lots of templates um, on the internet. So this is a petal shape, so you could do lots of these and make a flower. So I'm just going to draw around my template onto the bonder web. Like that. And then I'm going to... This blue fabric is going to be my, my petal out of that. I'm going to iron... Oh, you turned your iron on and everything. I did, I was very organised today. Well done. I'm just going to place that onto the wrong side of my fabric. And iron it on. Oh, this iron's hit up a little bit. Don't draw around your template in a friction pen, as I have done previously. <laughs> then you iron it on and it disappears. That so is that, the sort of thing I would do. <laughs> that's now ironed on to my um, fabric that I want to use for my applique. So I'm going to cut round this shape now. And obviously, really you want to do this as neatly as possible. I'm just going to make that a little bit neater there. Once you've cut round your shape, Checking things on the floor again. Okay, the trickiest bit now is to get the paper off. So you're going to peel the paper off. If you can't get the paper off easily, just use a pin and peel the paper off. There. And now that is now an iron on patch. So I can iron that on. I'm going to iron it onto this piece of calico here. Oh, my eyes spitting. Whoa! Sorry, did you get steam in the camera? Very <laughs> steamy face there. Was, yeah. was that a good shot? Oh, yeah, I think we so. had that photographer and he loved all the shots with the steam, didn't he? He did, yeah. Um, so that 
shape is now ironed on there and that would stay quite well on there um, but after a few washes that might come off so it, it's nice to stitch around the edge of this um, and you can do it in a matching thread or a contrasting thread I'm going to do some silly like that I'm going to do red thread on here so we're going to come to the sewing machine I'm going to select a zigzag stitch. It's your standard zigzag stitch, which on my machines is number six. That's your standard zigzag stitch. There's lo there's lots of stitches you can use for applique um, when you start looking, but this one a good one to start off with is a zigzag stitch, stitch width 3.5 and stitch length 0.4. Now this is only a guide, and I often just say to people just have a go at this and see how you get on with this stitch. You can adjust the stitch width and stitch length um, for whatever uh, fabric you're using, whatever project you're doing. But that's a really good um, starting point. The foot I'm going to use is called a satin stitch foot. Oh, is that <laughs> Sorry, satin stitch foot. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. That's the satin stitch foot. It's a clear foot. Uh, and on the bottom of it, it's got these two metal pieces here and what that what they do is they lift I mean the middle of the foot is now lifted up so when you do this zigzag it's going to, the foot's going to slide over it really nice and easily and also this will help slide on the fabric as well so I'm going to put that foot on the machine before I start I just want to show you that stitch before I actually do it on the um, on my shape I'm going to show you the stitch here what letter is the foot Catherine's asking uh, F F for Freddie F for Freddie yeah. F for Freddie yeah you can also get um, an open fox trot we should say yeah, yeah. fox trot yeah <laughs> um, you can also get an open toe foot as well which means it hasn't got that um, plastic bit in the middle which is with the big stitches it's the one you can use for doing all of your embroidery stitches on your machine or your fancy stitches. Uh, Flower1070 on Instagram. I think, is that Jo? Saying hello anyway. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> so I'm just going to stitch forward. So that's the stitch I'm going to be using. That's my satin stitch that I was going to go round the edge of my piece with. Now a couple of things, just a couple of things quickly while I'm talking applique. Um, when you turn a corner on applique, you have a choice of whether you want a closed corner or an open corner. And that will just decide, just depend on what, what side you stop, which side of the zigzag you stop with your needle down. So if I stop with my needle on the left of the zigzag and I turn anti-clockwise, I'll show you this in a sec, I will get an open corner. So that's an open corner. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I stop with my needle on the other side, let me show you. If I stop with my needle on the right and turn anti-clockwise, I'll get a closed corner. Ah, that's clever. I didn't know... Oh, sorry, I just dropped the camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's very clever. I didn't know that. There you go. There you go. You see, so there's the two corners that you can choose when you're doing a plique. That's an open it this corner. Way a bit because I'm trying to hide all the stuff in the back. Okay. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. so you've got an open corner and a closed corner. So both of them are equally nice. It's just, uh, it's good to sort of decide what you want to do before you start. Um... Janet has an F2, which yeah. is an open foot. Yeah, that's that'll, right, that'll it? work. It just hasn't got the extra bit of plastic in the middle there, Janet. It's perfect. That's fine. So when you're starting on some sort of shape like this, always start on a straight bit. Don't start on the corner because that's always messy to start. Always start on a straight bit. Um, and this, the reason I quite like this F foot is you can't see it from there, but if you have that foot, you'll see. Um, Suzanne's saying, don't worry so much, Amy. 
<laughs> what about showing our messy floor? <laughs> well, it's impossible right now not to show that corner. <laughs> um, this this uh, F has got a little triangle in it, so you can put the triangle on the edge of your um, fabric here, so you more or less get the stitch even on each side of the applique shape. The main thing to think about is you want you want to ease your piece under the needle but don't pull it if you pull it I'll just do a bit if you pull it then you're going to stretch out the zigzag particularly when you're going on the corner it's very tempting to to pull it around the corner so try not to just try and ease it without pulling it so I won't go all the way around because that's going to be boring for you isn't it really mm -hmm. <laughs> So there we go. So you can see, I don't know if you can see, here's where I was doing it really nicely and just easing it. And then here I started to pull it and it's gone a bit wide apart. So not ideal really. So try, I mean, obviously that's your design, but whatever you decide to do, try and be consistent. And you can go all the way around, decide whether you want a closed corner or an open corner at the bottom here, and then continue. And when you, when you get back to uh, where you started, Try and finish as close to this as possible and then you can pull your threads through to the wrong side and knot them on the back. So it'll look like a continuous line of satin stitch. Bonnie is saying she always learns so much from you, she never knew what to use her clear foot for. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. That's a really good foot. I like that one. And it does, because the uh, satin stitch is slightly raised, using that foot um, works really well because that's quite bulky there. And a normal foot might get stuck on this, but whereas the... Um, F or satin stitch foot is perfect for it. So that's uh, that's for woven fabrics using um, Bondaweb. There's another product that you can use which is called Stretch Fix. Which is uh, the same company as um, uh, who make Bondaweb. I've lost my pen. I'll just cut out a square. I'm just cut out a little square of this one here and iron it on. So stretch fix is similar to um, Bondaweb, but it means that you can do your applique onto a stretch fabric. So this one is slightly different. I'm just going to cut out my shape once it's on the fabric this time, just so that I've got my... It's a nice simple shape, so I didn't draw a round of templates. I wanted to show you quickly. So this one, so this, this is again, I fuse the stretch fix onto the back, take off the paper. <laughs> this will be the thing. Take off the paper. Just talk amongst yourselves from there. <laughs> I'll take off the paper. There we go. Take off the paper, and now that's a sticky, stretchy patch. So if you're making things for, this is from one of my sample packs, so it looks like a little bodice. <laughs> Sorry, Ames. Oh, it's one, one of my show kits. One of the kits. There we go. So I can put a little <laughs> square on the front there. Iron it on. So now that patch is on there, but it stretches with the fabric. So you're not going to lose any of the stretch there. So now I can go back to the machine. And I'm going to applique that on. So would you not need to use a stretchy stitch then? Well, a zigzag is a stretchy stitch. Oh, of course. So I might make it maybe not quite as close together on the... So I might go up to... Maybe I'll go up to 1.5. So it's not quite such a dense satin stitch on the um, jersey. I'm going to stop with my needle on the right so I have a closed corner on one corner and then I'll come down and do a different one on the other corner. But again, I'm starting in the middle of a straight. Oh, the thread then. So on this one, oh, that's a closed corner again. I'm just going to do a closed corner <laughs> because it stopped there, which means it Okay. Get all the way round. Stop 
on the left. So I'll do an open corner on this one. So the bond to open stretch bits just helps you add a little embellishment to your garments uh, and it makes it easy, doesn't it? That's not going to move around if it's got that bond web on it. So I'll just go up to where I finished and then I'm going to cut my thread because it's just a sample, but you would pull your threads through to the wrong side. Give that a press and there you go. That's an applique shape onto a jersey and it's stretchy because I use stretch fix. If I'd use Bonderweb, that would be solid. So it would be, I mean, you can use Bonderweb on a jersey, but you know, if you want it to stretch with the garment, the stretch fix, that's a fairly new product. It only came out about a year ago. So, so there you go. That was my little demo today. Very good. I hope that's been helpful, giving you some ideas for embellishing your clothes, particularly for all um, you ladies that are making things for your grandchildren. You could put lovely flowers. Oh, I don't know what angle that is. Sorry, it's going to be very close it's to be you. Quite close While up. I run around, oh no, I've loosened that way too much. I'll hold the line, callers. I'll hold the line. I'm just going to chuck some things on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> is that very close? It's a bit close. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. So I hope that's given mm -hmm. you some ideas of. Um, are things you could do to embellish your clothes and like I said especially for you ladies that are making things for your grandchildren you can if you've got a nice um, flowery fabric you could actually cut out one of the flowers and use that as a, an applique shape I do have stretch fix I have both stretch fix and but you can see the top of the shelf up there I've got Bonderweb and stretch fix Suzanne so you can get them by me I sell them by the meter so that you can uh, I think it works out a little bit more um, uh, cost effective to buy it by the meter rather than buying little tiny packets and things so so there you go, applique. You can applique bags, aprons, cushions, all sorts of things. Once you start, once you start, there you go. So, did you see that comment from Suzanne? I did, yes, oh, yes. I did. I said it's on the shelf behind. Oh. Me. <laughs> so Amy's going to come in I now. Um, Amy's uh, going to come and show you what she's got her lovely new blouse on today. And of course, she's got a nice mocktail for us as well. Can you move that way a bit? This way. Check. Can you still see me? A little bit, there? yeah. If you can come this way, keep going. A little bit more. No, like <laughs> actually move. <laughs> I'm on top of my sewing machine now. I know, but otherwise Instagram can't see. Oh, okay. Because Instagram is in portrait mode. Ah, hello. So Amy's here now. Hi. Move my stuff out of the way. So uh, Amy's bringing the Finch trolley in. I am. <laughs> Should be in, yeah. Sorry, we look, we're a bit closer together, but uh, on Instagram it's that way around. So I was just saying, saying can I send her two meters? I will send oh, you back with fix. the binding, the stretch fix. Yeah, yeah we'll do, Suzanne. Yes, I should be writing things down, should I remember? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so busy week for you, Angel. Busy week for me. Thank you, Suzanne. This, I have been making this blouse this week, uh, which Finally, you'll be wondering what I was up to in the background. I was sewing the buttons on of because it was the very last minute. I did the buttonholes about an hour before we came live and then I was just stitching the buttons on, trying to monitor your messages. <laughs> sewing all the buttons on. And then I got them wrong and the thread was getting tangled. Anyway. And I was saying, can you look at needles? Yeah, and I was like, no, I can't look at needles. I'm sewing on buttons. But anyway, it's made. It's done. So this is, a, sorry, I left my pattern over here. It is the paper cut Nexus blouse. Isn't it lovely? It's and so it's so pretty and it's nice and long at the back. And it's also, it's the same length at the front. It's got a split here, so it does a good demi-tuck. And these big cuffs. I think I might make uh, them a bit tighter on my arm though. I think I need to take the cuff mm. off and make it a bit smaller. Um, and the fabric is from Liberty. Yeah. Thank you everybody. Oh yeah, the fabric is a Liberty silk satin. Yeah, it's gorgeous, isn't it? And it was really easy for you to work with, wasn't it? Really easy, yeah, yeah for a silk satin. Because I bought one of their satins to make a bias skirt and it was very mm. uh, slippery. But this yeah. one wasn't too bad. The only thing I would say that I hadn't thought of at the time when I was cutting out was, I mean, this the pattern repeat is like, you know, seven stripes. But somehow these two are the same. <laughs> are the same. But I never would have known that because it's got a big facing and it, you know, yeah, I hadn't, I didn't, match, I didn't really think about yeah. it until, I, and it was the same. Even if I'd overlapped that way, this stripe would have been there. So, anyway, 
<laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yeah, it's lovely. And the buttons are, we've got some buttons, uh, uh, textile garden buttons, which yeah. Amy's used on the front. Yeah, I think I've used them on a little bit pattern, more yeah. paper pack patterns. Yeah, mm. but I'm liking paper pack patterns. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think my last three projects have needed buttons and the textile garden, they're little shell buttons with a metallic finish mm. and we have about 10 colours. We've got all the colours in, in both sizes. In yeah. the big size and then the little size via cuff. So. I've got one on my skirt. You do? Which colour did you do? Silver. Oh, you went silver. Nice. Yeah. Mm. So we both were busy. I think it, on Instagram I posted a picture of our two fabrics on the cutting table on Tuesday. So now you know. But then our week got away from us yeah. and we were both finishing our garments. I was literally doing that. An hour before the live. I think it was that lovely, that Emma Bannister who said, are we making bikinis? Oh, it was, yeah. But it's not bikinis. Not bikinis. <laughs> a blouse and a skirt. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we've been up to. Yes, yeah, so we've been busy sewing this week as well as doing sewing with silk camisoles and denim skirts. Denim skirts. As well this Yeah, week. I, um, I had a big admin week this week mm. and then, uh, yeah, planning. So we've, with the retreat, so we've, we've not only moved the retreats, the our retreat and the Metatelier retreat to August, September, we've also put the dates up for next year, haven't we? We have, so we've got the new dates for um, our Brighton retreat in March, I think it's the last week of March, mm -hmm. and then the Metatelier retreat next year will be the last week in April, so there so are spaces on everything, uh, there's spaces on the Totnes West Country retreat yep, in November, November, and... Even on the cruise. There's spaces on the cruise. Only one or two, though. I think there's only two spaces yeah. on the cruise. That's all. Uh, I was contacting the cruise people this week because we've all had our cabins upgraded because we had to cancel last year. And um, Club Balcony. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. So the colours suit me. It does. They do suit you. They're all your colours, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And the more I was working with it, the more I'd see a new colour. I was like, mm. oh my goodness, look at that cobalt. And then look at that bright green. Yeah, and you could work with so many different things. Yeah. It's really pretty. So I'm very happy with this. It's yeah. lovely. Yeah. When I first made it, I didn't. I just tried it on before I pressed the sleeves, and it's a drop shoulder. <laughs> I looked like a clown because yeah. it just puffed out. You yeah. Worried, probably, I was like, oh, no, <laughs> I've made a clown top. Let's oh, not wear can't. red lipstick yes, today. You said I can't wear red lipstick because I look like a clown. <laughs> yeah, but it was fine after a good press. Yeah. Yeah. Looks very pretty. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. we're very excited about all our retreats mm. now. We feel like we can start planning a little bit, yeah. starting to plan our travel in America. We're about to book a trip in May. Um, we were actually in New York this time, like today, mm. last yeah. year. I got a little memory on Facebook today that we were there doing our recce for our trip. That should have happened last year. It should have happened last mm. year. But we're going to have to go back again because we've chosen lots of restaurants for all the dinners and the breakfasts and we don't know the situation in New York, whether no. those companies are still open. So oh, look, thank fabulous. you, Barbara. <laughs> so we're going to go back in May, mm -hmm. uh, do a recce, maybe do some fabric shopping. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to go and check that they're all still open. We do. We, we have do. to go to Mood just in case. So, you know. Yeah. Just double check. We might, we might choose some different Well, we'll have finished our stash by then. We if it's done. locked down. With all these sew-alongs. With all these sew <laughs> yeah, we'll run out of fabric, so we need to go on a fabric buying We trip. still need to go down to Victoria and get, I've got a, I haven't got anything to make my kimono. Neither have I. No, so we've got to go down to Victoria, so yeah. don't worry. We'll pop down and see you, Victoria. Yeah. Pick up some fabric. We will. So, sorry if anybody's commenting on Instagram, we can't see those because the phone's all the way around now. Yeah. Can we see them afterwards, the comments on Instagram? I can see them afterwards. Yeah, so we can. I think so. Yeah. Catch up afterwards. I don't know. So what drink have you got for us this week? Well, this it's week, sure. as the last one of our mocktails. It's the last day of dry January, or the last Friday of dry January. January. Next week we're going back to alcoholic, I so promise. two suitcases. Well, yes, we, we just, do often have we to go get an out empty with, one. Yeah, go out with an empty one, Susan. Or we take two, like, half full ones. <laughs> <laughs> we always get the extra suitcase. We never go to New York with hand luggage, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Um, so today's cocktail, mocktail I should mocktail. say but it could be a cocktail is a rhubarb spritz um seeing as rhubarb is in season is it I don't know is it I don't know maybe not well I was able to buy it got so. it, anyway. got got it. we wanted to do raspberries didn't we one week we wanted to do raspberries so expensive oh don't put them up <laughs> <laughs> out of the way glasses oh um, so, yeah, we're having a rhubarb spritz this week, mm -hmm. and this could be made alcoholic if you want, but obviously we are having a non-alcoholic version for our last mocktail. We're using seed lip. Again. We're using seed lip, uh, non-alcoholic spirit, it's kind of like gin. Um, I've bought both because I didn't have enough of one, so we're using the Grove, seed, seed lip Grove. Oh, um, there you go, Julia's saying rhubarb is just about in. Oh, okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> I've got, no, I've just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what you need for this cocktail. First of all, you need to make a rhubarb cordial, um, which I think would be really nice uh, with lemonade and stuff anyway. Yeah. We tried it last just night. Just some water or something. To make the cordial, you use three sticks of rhubarb, chop them up, put them into a jug with 250 mils of boiling water mm. and one cup of caster sugar and let it sit for two hours and then uh, drain it, strain it. Mm. Did you mess around a bit? I did just sort of squish it just before yeah, I strained it, just to get a bit more colour out. And it's turned this lovely pink colour. And it's quite sweet, it's mint syrup, it's a cordial, but it does have this lovely taste of rhubarb. Mm. So rhubarb cordial. Um, you need a bit of rhubarb as well for garnish. Of course, of course. Garnish. Um, I was worried that these would go limp, but they don't seem to have done. So you're gonna, I didn't, I forgot my peeler, but actually uh, you can just use a knife and just take the skin off of some rhubarb and it will turn into a nice ribbon, which will look really pretty in the drink. That's really pretty. Yeah. Oops, very stringy, isn't it? Stringy stuff. Um, so get your ribbons first because it'll be nicer to put them in the glass first. Um, I'm using a copper glass which is a, just basically a big gin glass and you pop in your ribbons. These are our Brighton gin glasses. These are our Brighton gin ones. Ooh. Oh, they got all funny. Just pop them in. Are you trying to do designer? I was designer trying to do designer there it didn't work. How much sugar is in the glass again? How much sugar? One cup, an American cup. I um, can't remember what that is in grams but I can look it up. Look it up. Um, you also are going to need some Fever Tree Aromatic Tonic. It comes in light and normal um, but the aromatic one. It's a pretty colour as it's well. It's a very pretty colour. So in your shaker just pop some ice. Just a little bit. Have you tried Worthing Gin? No Charlie I haven't, I haven't tried Worthing Gin. We like Brighton Gin. We haven't tried Worthing Gin. No. We're also going to pop ice in the glass as well. I'm, I need to get a. I need to sort out my cocktail stuff because I can't keep using my hands like this. No, what are you supposed to be using? A spoon. A spoon! <laughs> but I don't have all the right tools here. I need to up my game. Really. Yeah, because we're at home, it's easy. Isn't yeah, it? we weren't planning. We didn't know how long we were going to be doing these up here. I need to get all my equipment. Yeah. So, ice in the glass, ice in the shaker. You're then going to put a double shot, so 50 mils per person, of your selected spirit, whether it be non alcoholic or alcoholic. I love these non-alcoholic ones though, because they're really, aren't they really nice for people who are driving or, you know, people yeah, who I mean, want to have a non-alcoholic drink that's a, a nice drink. It's really It's good for us lemonade. because we have to drive home from Midhurst. It was different we when we were doing them in the summer. Cause we can do next week. We'll have to just, we can have one. We can, or we can take them home, have them at home. Yeah. Or taste it on the live and then take Taste it on the live. <laughs> then your cordial, you're just going to have half a shot. Taste it, see if you want to add more, because it's quite sweet and quite intense. Mm. So just... Half a shot, which is about 15 mils, 12 and a half mils, really. And obviously, that is per person, so I'm putting a shot in. Give that a shake. So, you could use gin, you could use vodka, would work really well. White spirit. Not white spirit. Not white, white spirit, spirit, but white. A white a spirit. White spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a shake until it's too cold to touch the shaker and then pour that in your glass. And it's looking pretty already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you just top that with the aromatic tonic. Oh look it's so pretty. Yeah, I thought you'd buy this one. Yes, I do. So you can just top the same as like a gin and tonic in a sense that you can just top it with as much or as little tonic as you like. Just taste it. If you feel like it needs a bit more syrup, you can add more syrup. Thank you. And your little rhubarb ribbons will spin around. Look how pretty that is. And there we go. Cheers. Rhubarb spritz. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers everybody. Oh, it it's lovely. Yeah, and you know what? Because, it, because it's called a rhubarb spritz, I was really hoping. Oh, bye, Catherine. That it would taste a bit like an Aperol spritz. Oh, back to work, Catherine. It does take back up. It does. It's because of the aromatic tonic, mm. because it's got that sharpness that you get from an Aperol spritz. So that's very delicious. Lovely. Mm. Mm. It's a, it is a really lovely mocktail. It's really lovely. So you have to try this one. Yeah, and I will it's put pretty. the recipe up. I will uh, type it up. Put it. Um, 
I always put it on the YouTube channel if you want to go and look there, but otherwise I'll, I can put it on here as well. Very refreshing, so, Suzanne. Yeah, it's lovely. really nice. I could drink that all night. Yeah, really <laughs> nice. I love that one. Yeah. So that's mm. good. And that, I mean, you get a lot of cordial with that uh, recipe. So, I mean, it'd be lovely with lemonade, <coughs> that cordial. Really nice. Or just with tonic water. <coughs> you all right? <laughs> Sorry. What's happening over there? Are you okay? <laughs> that's what it's nice. Oh! <laughs> Worried. Sorry, okay. <laughs> I am. Talk to Amy. Not supposed to swallow the ice. No, it's fine. So there we go. Can you use skinny sugar? Yes, I'm yeah. sure you could. You can. Yeah, mm. I just use fatty pasta sugar, but any sugar you like. I just use a really nice that one. It's a really nice one. So mm. do try it. Oh gosh, I lost my voice now. <laughs> <laughs> drink some more. <laughs> Oh, sorry, everybody. I've just followed some ice and it's made my voice go. Oh dear. I'm back now. Oh. <laughs> That's not good. It's ending our first, um, our first, the last, our last mocktail one. Oh, is in my voice. No. But it's so, really good, Susan. Yes, do try it. It's really lovely. I'll it's really delicious, later. actually. Yeah, I'm mm. happy with that one. Yeah, really nice. I'm going to drink some more. I'm coming to what Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with my mm. little cordial. Worked very well. So I'm thinking mm. of all the other flavoured cordials I could make now. Yeah, it's lovely. I guess that's just how you make cordial. I've never mm. made cordial before. I always thought you had to sort of boil it with boiled sugar and then like syrup. Well, but, uh, no, I mean, you just <laughs> use boiling water. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. <coughs> I think I'll be talking too much this week. Uh, That's you've why I've been talking a lot. You've done a lot of classes and workshops. A lot of, lot of talking this week. Yeah. That's probably me telling me to stop talking. Stop talking now. Yeah. <laughs> That's enough talking. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all we've got this week. Oh, I lose my voice completely. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a really lovely drink. Do try it. Mm. And keep in touch. Let us know what you will be doing this week. Yeah. What will we'll, we um, we'll, we'll be putting all the... Um... Claire's got throat freeze. I have got throat freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Still going? Yeah, no, I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine now. I'm back. Back in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, do let us know what you're doing this week. We've got lots of plans for next week as well. So Yeah, we'll be making more as well. We so keep your mm. eyes peeled on yep. Instagram for our sneaky peeks. Mm. Yeah, we will. Um, so by next week, next, a couple of weeks come by so quickly. Suddenly it's Friday again. So I can't believe it's already Friday. Friday. Yeah. So yeah, next week we've just we've got um, cardigan and denim skirt. So that sounds like a quiet week, but I know it's not going to be. <laughs> Those are full days. They yeah, are full on because we're here days. from like nine a.m. till nine p.m. Yeah. So they're and a full on are. day. Yeah. So and we do fun. both. But it's always such good fun. Like I say, it's always nice to have everybody here on the sewing room. It us. is. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Making cardigans. Yeah. Shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, that's about that. That's, that's it. <laughs> We're getting very distracted. Oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we are. Yeah. I think we. I think it's time for us to go. I think so. Yeah. Please. So we need to go and do the. Oh yeah. Though. You need to go. Bye everyone. Have a lovely weekend. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. So we went a bit off the. We did. We're not yeah. even on alcohol yet. We're not. We're Imagine what worse. next week's going to be. We're worse on mocktails than we are on cocktails. I think it's been so lovely to see you all. Oh, quickly on Instagram. Um, Oh, Cynthia loved my fabric, and oh, Cynthia has, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that, sorry. Cynthia has just made the pineapple and ginger shrub from last week, so she'll be ah, having that this evening. Oh, excellent. Bye, Bonnie. So Bye, it's been Claire. lovely to see you all. We'll see you all next week. Have a great week, and do keep in touch. Bye, everybody. <laughs>